Oh, you're on. Okay, great. So welcome. This is um, our trails committee meeting on April 23rd. I'm going to read our introduction. So pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, chapter 30, section 18, and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Southboro Trails Committee will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town of Southboro's website at https colon forward slash forward slash www.southborotown.com. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to watch or participate in the meeting may do so in the following manner by finding the meeting at um, the link that's on the agenda. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via <clears throat> technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post <coughs> <clears throat> an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. So we will do a roll call of who is present, and I'll kick off with McKee here. Okay. Uh, Isabel Murphy here. Uh, Tom Michael, you're here. Um, Louisa. Here, okay. You're on mute, Louisa. Do you want me to unmute you? Oh, she's off mute now. I think. Yeah. Great. I know I can't hear. Her. Yeah, we we can't really hear you. So I'll vouch for Louisa that she is attending the the meeting remotely, and she'll work out her audio issues shortly. Okay, great. So thank you, everyone, for um for meeting. I think we had a very um specific agenda. Um, to come together to talk about our grant proposal for the Choate Fund. Um, so I will start by um, saying, um, so I've sent everyone some information. <clears throat> the sign, we, we received a quote, a proposal from our sign maker that I'd use for the town forest. Um, did everybody have a chance to look at that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, um, I want to pull up the PDF for the recording. Um, let me just take a moment to do that. So you guys can see this screen. This is the email we received. Can you guys see my screen with a couple of pictures on it? Yeah, yeah. well right. done. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, our quote. So these are a couple of options that he put together. Um, the idea, just to recap, is to, we have four trailhead kiosks, map kiosks, and we thought we might reach out to see if we could get a grant to fund to put um, Southboro Trail sign on each of the kiosks. Um, so these are two options that he put together for us. And uh, I guess I'll open it up to uh, initial thoughts and feedback. I like it. I, I like option two. I think it's more in keeping with the Southboro tradition. I agree. I like the lettering better on number two, and I'm just going to throw this out there. But you notice how we have all the signs around town at the transfer station and downtown has that green back. Do we want to be consistent? Uh, no. No, I, I, I like. Yeah, I understand your question. It just, it just, uh, it, I'm throwing out there for everybody. I'm not making an opinion. Um, yeah. Don't know if we want to throw the consistency. I right. think that's that's a great point. I think. Um, because it is trails and we want to keep more of a rural character, I think if we keep the, um, the, the serif strip that was in option two, it's similar to the lettering that's done in Southboro, but I like it being uh, the red cedar. Louisa, do you have any thoughts? It looks like she agreed with uh, everything that Isabel <laughs> said. Um, yeah, so I, I like that point, Isabel. Um, and your point, Tom, is true, like keeping the consistency 
um, and look and feel is really important. Um, one of the asks, one of the way I, um, I approached the sign, his name is Philip, I asked him if he could, because the, the kiosks are very um, rustic and they are rural, I was hoping that whatever sign we use could kind of blend in and not stick out as a fancy sign on a, you know, kind of a rustic, um, so it would fit with the, and not be too, um, what do they call it? Uh, it's a type of pollution, not not sign pollution, but uh, there's a thing when you're out and about, it's color pollution, like it can be too bright of a color, it, it offends people, and I'm not looking to, to um, make everyone happy, but that was one of the thoughts that I had um, initially kind of approached him about to kind of blend in and fit within the within the style that we have. I like it. Option two, I like uh, the two. I like it better. Yeah, and I, at first, I liked option one, but when I saw it a second time with just these two, I like option two better as well. Um, I, I do have a question. Uh, Louisa voted on two, too. I just oh, you did? Oh, awesome, thank you. Okay. Two. Oh. Option two. Sati. Oh, Sati, yeah, he said his, his uh, <laughs> Zoom was downloading. There you are. Hello. Option two. So we're just, oh, you see it. Okay, great. So um, we're just talking about the signs. So the other question is, um, is this. So I sent him a picture of the kiosk so he would understand and the dimensions. Um, and this sign is uh, 47 inches wide. And that's the same, that's the width of the entire kiosk from post outside of the post to outside of the post. And so I'm wondering, there's two things. One, is that too long? to have it the whole width of the kiosk. Like I was kind of thinking a smaller sign, um, you know, and then the other question is placement. So um, the way the kiosk is set up, it's not really set up to take a sign if we were thinking about putting it kind of at where the roof ends and having a sign there. There's not a backboard to, uh, to affix it to. Uh, you know, so what we could do is if we wanted it, so our the question is the location of where the sign should go on the kiosk, right? So if you can imagine the kiosk and the roof, it kind of comes down in an A-frame. So one option is we put it right at the end of the A-frame, at the end of the roof, and we can take maybe two um, two pieces of wood and extend it back to the the, the kiosk itself. So it would literally sit right at the end of the roof. Does that make sense? I know I'm just mm -hmm. it oddly. That's one thought. The other thought is the kiosk, if you can it, visualize the way it looks, there's another option if we were to put it, you know, where the map section is right underneath that, it's kind of just bare wood. We could put a little sign there as another option. So it might be nice to kind of what I could do after our meeting is um, do some photoshopping and kind of place it in two different locations and let the committee look at that and uh, kind of vote on. And, and it might be, I don't know if it needs to all go in the same spot for all the kiosks if we change it up per location. I don't know um, what the best option is. I do like consistency, but I would be open to, to others' ideas on that. So anyone, anyone have any thoughts? I guess we have to really visualize it. You don't have a picture of the kiosk, do you right now? Yeah, I, um, let me think. I'm on my um, backup computer and I don't have my work, I don't have all my images here. However, I'm fairly certain I I'll sent- two. I don't think I have a picture of one. Let me just look to I think I sent him an, and a PDF. So give me just two seconds. Bingo, got it. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Is it, am I on the right screen or am I on the wrong screen? No, oh, you're still on the same one. Yeah. Okay. So let me see. So what that means is I have to go to Zoom. Not that one. Hold on. All right, I'm kind of lost in my Zoom world, um, so hang you, on. You just have to select. So if you go back to sh share screen. Uh, yeah, I lost my controls. Oh. Oh, there they are. Thank you. 
There we go. Okay. It's a little confusing. There we go. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, sweet. This is much better. Thank you for calling that up. Okay, so this is an example of what uh, the Beals Preserve did. They put their little sign here, right? That mm -hmm. looks nice. But you see this little backboard they have? We don't have that on ours. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's the that's the challenge. So what we could do is if we extended a, um, a couple of pieces of wood here and placed it so that it could sit there, that was one thought. Or, you know, we put it, kind of in the middle down here. So so just a thought. Um, I see both the top and top of the, where where the information goes in the bottom. It looks like the same size. Yes. By, I, by yeah, four, whatever five, it is. Five inches wide. Five and a half inches wide. So so again I'm just throwing this out for conversation. So that's five and a half, but our the sign that you presented was 10 inches. Yes. Would it would it's definitely going to overlap and come into where we see um, the signage. Well, well if, if, bottom, if, if you, you put, put it, it at the bottom, here, then you don't have to worry about that. Right. You could line it up so it wouldn't do that. Right. Or the other thing is, so you see there's five inches here, but then there's that gap. I think there's like a bit of a gap. So Can if, you um, zoom in at all or not? Yeah, let me, maybe. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Wow. How about hanging to the, hanging onto the rafters type? Okay, something like here. Yeah. And then yeah, it could so overlap the roof so it would extend above the roof a little so it wouldn't fall down in here. Yeah, so we got the 10 inches to deal with. Mm -hmm. I can't, well, I, it looks like that would be fine to do it that way. And I, I like it on top. Um, I kind of like it on top too. I, I think it would look a little weird if it were in the middle. I don't know. Yeah, it's really if it can fit up there, I, I do like it up in the top. It's yeah. right there where you where you're highlighting. And if that's 10 inches, and if it's not 10 inches, is that 10 inches a standard stock? No, he I think we could probably work with that size if he knew our constraints. Um yeah, if it's like nine inches, then we'll just do it at not, you know, I'm just throwing that out there. I don't yeah. know measurements. Yeah. Because it could be we put a kind of an L-shaped something hanging from the rafters, so it would you know kind of hang out, but overlap the roof, and then just a little overhang at the yeah. bottom so that it wouldn't impede on the map. Yep. Um, no, that looks good. I I like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice so. Chaos. Yeah, it is right. They're um coming together. Nicely. Um, unfortunately, FedEx is closed. FedEx Kinkos, and they were they have the nice waterproof paper that I was using for the maps. So for the Route 30 kiosk, um, it's just I'm probably going to have to just print it on regular paper, get it laminated, just for a little extra protection, until FedEx Kinkos opens up again in the future. So, yeah, what's the size of the maps? Um, excuse me. What is the size of the maps? Um, the ones I was, uh, the biggest one is 11 by 17. Okay. <clears throat> you have a laminator, don't you? Pardon me? You have a laminator, don't you? I do, but it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't go that large. Yeah, so um, we would only need to do a few pages, so that that would be good. Um, but a few of them would be eight and a half by 11, I think, so. Um, I can do those. That might be something we can take you up on and just say sure. a little bit of. But, okay. But, um, okay. So that's good. Option two will be what we look at. And I think I'll probably need to um, go out and look at the site and kind of see. I'll go out with my husband who's got an engineering mind and is good with this kind of stuff to see if what we if it would fit as a 10 inch or if we have to adjust that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you guys okay with a white painted lettering? It would be carved, I think carved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, V grooved letters. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I thought it was pretty reasonable 265 um, for each one. And if we're doing four, um, that's not bad. And then I, I did ask him if he would um, quote us on installation. So he is going to send a quote on that as well. Um, because if I think it'd be pretty tough for us to to figure that out. I mean, I don't, we've asked DPW a lot and they've been very helpful, but I wanna, you know, wherever we can 
make things happen on our own would be probably, in, you know, something like this would be good for us to figure out. Anyone handy with a hammer? No. Oh, we wouldn't do it with a hammer. It would be a screw. <laughs> oh, see, that's why I'm not on the job. <laughs> Off that job. <laughs> Uh, it, it should be relative. It, it should be simple to install it. I mean, that's easy enough. One person to hold it, and the other one to put in the non-rusting screws. Yeah. Okay. It should be, it should be easy. Yeah. I, I mean, I could do that. That's... Yeah. Everything. Everything is easy until it's not. I know. <laughs> <laughs> until it comes to a project that I do. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how I think. I used to think, oh, it's going to be fun. It can I can work that out, and, and then it's it's always much bigger than I thought. So, um, okay. So let's move on to the other part of the, I don't know how to, yeah, I'm demonstrating my lack of technology. I thought it was techni technical, technologically savvy, but apparently I'm, I'm stuck. So anyway, um, what we're looking at here is a couple of options for the fishing tackle receptacle. So um, this one example is similar to the one you had talked about last time, Tom, where it mm -hmm. is, it's, um, attached to a pole and the locations we're looking at might be challenging to attach it to a pole because I believe those are high tension wires who um, prohibit us from attaching things. So I thought this freestanding post idea was an interesting one. It looks like they're just, you know, um, attached via a, a very strong zip tie or a metal bracket or something. So that's a, an option. Yeah, could you um, scroll down just a little bit so we see what the bottom part looks like? um of this one yes is that good it didn't move um okay it's the one with the guy with the red coat oh yeah okay. oh, i'm sorry yep do you see that is that better oh yeah no i i thought we were looking at the one on the beach oh okay yeah that is an example of one so we have a couple of options um, and what I found was interesting is, and this is going to make for a, a really good proposal, is the reason why we need to pick up this trash is the wildlife impact. And mm -hmm. I, I wasn't really considering all of the, um, you know, the impacts on our wild, on our birds or our swans or any of those, um, even even the aquatic animals, how dangerous it could be, the turtles and all those sorts of things. So I think that's going to make a really good case for why this is something we should look at doing. And I think because, I mean, how many are we looking at doing? One on the point and, you know, where else do we want to have one? Um, Isabel, do we need one by your neck of the woods off of White Bagley where people tend to fish? Yeah, there's uh, towards right after the intersection of Latasquama and White Bagley. Yep. You know, getting going towards the land bridge towards Route 9. There's that entryway where there is a, a gate and there's fishing tackle along there all the time. Okay. Um, and then definitely the one on the point that we talked about. Yep. That's going to be off of Route 30. Um, that, so it, what is that East Main to Route 30, that little elbow? Mm -hmm. or, yep. Okay. It's like East Main and Framingham Road. Yes. yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then we might want to consider, you know, what we, they, it's often referred to as the, the island, the area that juts out. You can see it from Route 9. Mm -hmm. If you go to, um, uh, go it's to White called, it's, Road. Yeah, it's, what is it, Pot not Partridge. Is oh, off of Partridge. Yeah, Rock Island, or you call it Treasure yeah, Island. What do you call it? Island. Secret Island. Secret <laughs> Island, yes. <laughs> we'll need a sign for that. <laughs> you um, don't care about the, rail, the water near the railway tracks, right? Because people come there too. Oh, that's a great point, Sadi. Technically, we're not supposed to be walking on there because that's not part of our, our trail. Yet. Yet. <laughs> but that's a great point. Yeah, so let's that's going to be a good um let's keep that in the back of our minds when that that one day gets opened. Yay. So that was East Main and Framingham Road area, the gate um off of White Bagley. Now, is it just the gate um Isabel or are there is there a, a location that's kind of closer to the Latasquama 
intersection that people where the tree is down. Yeah, right. Well, I, where the tree is down. Yeah, I guess part of it is where there's a lot of fishing tackle is not technically like the beach, you know, bare ass beach is technically not part of our trail. So I don't know if we'd want to propose putting one there. Okay. So it sounds like we have two locations for sure at this point. And three, Secret Island. Right. Oh, okay. So do we want to on Secret Island? Or no, it'll be off of it. Yeah. It'll yeah. be off. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'd like to keep it sacred. Yeah. There, you know, there used to be a, um, you know, a walkway that Tim Kemper built that's fallen apart now. Now we just go across over on, on the rocks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did some cleanup there last year, trash cleanup. That worked out well. Okay, yep. great. So we'll look at doing three of those. And the other thing is there was a nice how-to video on how to make those. Really? EBC pipe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I don't know if we want to, you know, go so far as to buy them as they, I mean, I'm sure it's easier to buy them pre-made because they're made, you know, already to be functional. And, you know, we're, we're just finishing saying it's, it's good in theory to want to do things ourselves, but is it, <laughs> is it practical? So what do you guys think about which way would we like to buy something off, you know, that's pre-made off the shelf or do we want to <laughs> DIY elbow grease in it? <laughs> I mean, how much it costs though? I couldn't tell. Um, did you, I, I poked around a little bit. I didn't have a lot of time. Uh, Tom, have you run into any pricing on that? Yeah, so so I, so I that the, the site that you draw the pictures, Boats, Boats US or something like that. Yep. Uh, they, that's where they had the nice little YouTube video how to do it. Uh, this, the decals and stuff, you, they have the website. I wanna say like some of the decals, I think it's the blue one and some of the recycled ones. I want to say all the details decals probably cost like twenty dollars per one of those. Is and that the signage at the top you're talking about? Yeah, you know you can see. Oh, the, the these red. decals. Okay. Yeah, you have the red decal and the blue decal and stuff like that. Okay. Um, I saw on their website it was like twenty dollars, but I, you know, oh, like, yeah. so it's that's yeah, relatively yeah. inexpensive. And the piping, you know, we just have to price it out at Home Depot. Yeah. Uh, if you look at it, it's just you have a piece of piping and then at the bottom is a little screw lip. Yeah. Um, if you notice, um, not, that I, not that I do a lot of plumbing stuff, but in the middle is just a regular pipe and you cut off both ends. You need elbow. You have that, uh, you, you glue on the attachment and you have the little yeah. thing. And then the top is just an angle. Okay. You're hired. It's yeah. I mean, it's really, <laughs> I can, yeah, those things are very easy to do. I, you would have to buy the material and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but it's relatively as uh, long as there is no water flowing <laughs> flowing through it, it is easy to do, right? Yeah. Yeah, we and that's why they have the little angle on the top so water yeah. doesn't get in the bottom. Uh, were we going to consider putting some kind of grid so that people couldn't put large things into it? I think. Yeah, we could do something like that. I did see uh, pictures of that too. Yeah, I think uh, so because I think inadvertently they're going to stick a beer bottle or beer can in there. Sure. I was I was more worried about cigarette butts throwing your lit butts in there. Oh yeah, I thought about that. Uh -huh. yeah. So the other question is how main, maintenance and maintaining these would this be something? And I think now I say this, I'm going to put it out there, and you guys shoot it down. I think you know only having uh, three of these would be manageable for the committee to maintain. Um, we can assign someone you know to have a, a you know it's our month or whatever we want to do and rotate going and checking them and emptying them. How does that sound? Because I don't think anyone else is going to do it unless we get our trail adopters. Um, if they happen to be out there and want to be a part of that, it, we could um, add that to our um, list if they're interested. So where are you going to dispose them? The trash? Yeah. That would be up to us just to grab a bag and then throw it at the transfer center when we go for our so that means you can, you can do only during the transfer station opening days, like Wednesday to Saturday, right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So any other thoughts on that? Um, I think until we know how much people are actually going to use it, it could be, it could be full, it could be empty. Yeah. yeah. We'll have to keep a look. Yeah, you know, we just have to make sure that, you know, again, we're careful. The gloves the whole bit because we're asking them to put 
hooks and lures yeah. and other crap in there. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Wear thick gloves. Yeah. Okay. I still think it's a hell of a, excuse me, a, a great deal better than having all that stuff sitting out on the rocks and in the bushes and. Yeah. yeah. And it's education too. The decals, I'm, I'm assuming, will have information for people and it educates people on this is a problem and, you know, this is your way of giving back by just putting your trash in here. Imagine that. How simple is that? Mm -hmm. And then the only other expense, depending on where we put them, is we might need like a post. Yes, that's yeah, good. a bag of cement. <clears throat> Relatively simple to do. Yeah, post and cement. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okie doke. So, um, and do we think the PVC piping, I thought this little guy was cute, this other one. Can you see him next to the red guy, the coat, the, the guy in the red, that little, yep. yeah. That looks more like it might be difficult to empty. Um, you might have to take it off and empty it out. So I think maybe the PVC piping would be better. Yeah, I, I think, it, I think that would be the least expensive option to do it and see if it, yeah. how successful we are. Yeah. yeah. My other concern about the green one is people are more likely to put crap it, trash in there. That's a good point. Mm. Yeah. Good point. I, can we paint PVC pipe? Can we paint it green to like kind of blend in? You don't want it to blend in. You want it to stick out. Yeah. Well, you know, it's one of those things <laughs> where you're walking peacefully down the trail and you're like, whoa, this big PVC white pipe is in my face. But it is our reality. So I suppose it's fine. Just make it a little camouflage. Um, okay, so I think that's the only two things. Um, was there any other topic on that that we needed to talk about? So what I need to do is put this together, um, get some quotes, and you know just price out some the 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 item there and and um, go from there and and send something out to you guys to take a look at, and then if you could just reply to me only don't reply to all with your feedback um that would be really helpful and I, I i've taken the next few days off friday and monday so i'll have a few extra days to pull something together um and uh we can go from there just unrelated to this um are we are we having the earth day no every day is earth day yeah i know but <laughs> <laughs> but for but for Southboro. No, no, unfortunately we, we aren't having Earth Day. Um, you know, it's it's they had to cancel it, so so we're following suit. Um you know, I, I will put out there, you know, we could individually if we wanted to give an hour of our time, if we see, you know, there is some trash in certain areas, if we wanted to go out and, you know, spend a, a little time where you know there's some trash at a trailhead or along the trail. Um, that could be something that as a trails committee, we're giving back and doing, um, you know, I was considering doing that. I, I might have one extra bag, sorry, DPW from last year, <laughs> um, from uh, some follow-up cleanup that I did. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think if we're interested in doing that, um, it's it's open to everyone to kind of get out there and-, and... You know, Sunday, this thing is there, right? Chestnut. Yeah, so that's a good segue. Um, Sati, so uh, so Melissa Danza, conservation agent um, who did a lot of good work getting the um, working with Chestnut Hill Farm to get that the trails open. Um, I had sent around an email asking for anyone who might have hours to uh, volunteer to help main help monitor the parking lot. So the idea is uh, once the parking lot is full. Um, no parking on the street, so just someone to kind of hang out for a little while to, to monitor that and to also help help people understand that there are certain restricted areas. They're going to rope it off and have some signage, but the, the volunteers will kind of help people guide and help encourage um, physical distancing um, and that kind of stuff. So I had offered up an hour on Saturday. Sati had offered an hour on Sunday. Um, and I'm hoping, so I did ask, I did ask Melissa if she could give us the rules and regs that we need yeah. to, if there's more to it than what I just said. Um, so I'll reach out to her tonight and see if there's any additional information that she wants to provide. And if the time slots you provided 10 to 11 and I provided, I think I provided 10 to 11 or 11 to 12 on Saturday, 
Um, she did say, Sati, that she might have us, because we have a limited time, she might have us um, on the trails kind of walking along and keep, you know, making sure things are in order on the trails rather than the parking lot. But I haven't heard back from her on how that, um, how she's organizing it. So I'll be in touch with you. Mm -hmm. um, but if anyone else has any time, um, I'm happy to, to share that with Melissa. Yeah, about the rules. So one of the things that, you know, if, if the parking lot is full, so if somebody comes, where do you send them? Just tell them, just go away? Yeah, you have, it, it's unfortunate, but actually it's interesting to see some of the parking lots are, are getting full, like the cemetery road, uh, cemetery parking lot at um, on Route 85 was full the other day. I was like, that's never full, you know? So the idea is, yes, you have to, unfortunately you have to come back. And that's oh, just, okay. yeah, because there's no on, on street parking um, and it's, uh, it's just, you know, we could obviously share where there's other places to go just down the street. They could park at um, our trailhead, at the trailhead kiosk at Old, Old Northboro Road, and um, they could walk up if they wanted to, or they could use the Sudbury Reservoir Trail or walk over to Elaine Beals Preserve or do the Town Forest or the, you know, Breakneck Hill. Yeah, yeah. so. So if anyone has any time, let me know, and I'll, I'll let Melissa know. But that's uh, that's that's great. It's great news that they're opening it up, um, starting tomorrow. Although tomorrow's raining, but Saturday's supposed to be nice. So that's Sunday's the... rain. Uh, Sunday's rain. Sunday's nice too. No rain. Oh really? <clears throat> well, that's too bad. I was gonna do some gardening projects, but oh well. That's why I took Sunday because. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't have to. Yeah. Do anything in the yard. Yeah. Okay. So those are the um, those two things and uh, the trails cleanup. So um, we talked connected earlier, Isabel. Any update from Mr. Our our friend Phil? With um, a proposal. Just um, just the last email that I sent to you. I mean, the good news is that he replied back and said that um, he had gotten oh. the email. He acknowledged it. Oh, did I get that? Re oh, did I miss? I might have missed it. Oh, my bad. Okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah, okay. so let me back up. Um, I reached out to um, to to Phil, who's Troop 92. Um, reached out a couple of times, didn't hear back. Just heard back within the past couple of days. He said that he apologized because of Easter. He was really, but he was going to put it out to the scouts to see if there was, you know, somebody who was interested in trying to take down that that down tree. Great, great. Um, if I don't hear from him in the next couple of days, I've got another option. Um, I have a, a neighbor who's got a strong son and a chainsaw and they've been out playing. So I figured I would ask them if they wanted to do it. Okay. Yeah. So I think, so I, I scouted a little more just to see if that wind from the other storm knocked more trees down. Um, we had section six trail adopter um, share that there was a trail down on Oak near the Bolin uh, pumping station. And I, I drove by, but that, tr that tree is probably going to stay down because it's on the other side. Um, so it is, it's not something that we actively maintain. Um, so I'm going to let her know, but to thank her for the update, but um, we're actually not on that side, it's the other side. So, and then the Partridge Hill repeat offender, there's like three or four very thick trees. Um, there's not many to fall left in that section. I guess that's a good news, um, but there's there's some work there and um, as well as uh, Latasquama. So I think uh, those two sections seem to be the only only ones, which is good. Um, that most of the trails are in, in good shape. So let me know um, about how that conversation goes. And, and maybe we'll have a hit or two from uh, the Boy Scouts. They have a wonderful umbrella policy that um, protects, you know, community service project days. So that's kind of useful to, okay. to consider as well when we, um, when we undertake these types of things. The other option is, you know, my husband is always looking for an opportunity to to break out now he if he heard me say this but now it's on recording so he might find it um but yeah he, he might be able to help too so we might be able to tag team it in that way okay yeah. great so i think that's it um the only scout update for the for eric hansen is i i'm trying to get the maps printed ran into the glitch um with 
FedEx Kinkos, but talk to Staples. So hopefully I'll get that this week and put up the maps and then he'll put up the uh, plexiglass. And I think he dropped off the kiosks at DPW and DPW added new flags on the, um, at the Route 85 location. So that means some movement's happening. Um, that's good news. Um, and then I think the only other thing, let's see. Master plan topic areas. Did you guys have an opportunity to look at over the, any of the materials um, that I sent? If you have any feedback, um, you're welcome to share now or send me an email with that. I think, Tom, when's our next, it's in the beginning of May, our next master plan meeting. Yeah, I was actually looking that up myself. Yeah, I, th I think it's the first full week in May, maybe the sixth is my guess. So if you guys want to let me know, I, I think, you know, I think the information's pretty complete, but your feedback is always um, welcome and very useful. So feel free to take a look at those outlines and make sure that our goals and objectives, as you understand them, are, are reflected there. So Isabel, sorry, sidebar, you know, in the beginning, you said um, some meet, yeah, Tom LaFame said some meetings run perfectly good and Catherine, you know, <laughs> The master planning one can get a little challenging I, with the technology. Okay. Oh, that's what you meant. Yeah. Okay. It was, it was what, 20 minutes, 25 minutes? Well, what was so interesting was that it was um, the name change. Like when someone logged in, it was it was Richard or I forget his name. Yeah, yeah, I think it was him. And and it was, it was logged in as a female. Um, and then, yeah, so it was all, it was, it was a really interesting twist, but oh, yeah. yeah. It's not just me who's had problems with the, the logging in. No, it, the whole key is getting the link from the town. Okay. Your, your individual link. Yes. That, yeah, your unique URL. Um, yeah, okay. So I haven't heard back from the Mass Regional Planning Commission on the interactive um, online regional map opportunity. I'm sure we're gonna stay in touch about that. Um, I have been in touch with, um, some folks about the trail markings along the Fayville athletic field. So there's no new updates on that yet, but um, that will hopefully get moving. And um, I think that's that's pretty much it. We don't have minutes to approve this week, um, but we can do that uh, this meeting, but we can do that next time. Our meeting minutes are current. Thank you, Sati, for all of your help. Um, and uh, moving forward, I think we'll be in much better shape uh, staying on top of that. Um, especially with these recordings, that's a really helpful record to have. So anything else um, that uh, we should be discussing that I haven't mentioned? Okay. Look, looks good to me. Okay, great. Mm. Um, just for the record, I do, I do note that I think Louisa dropped off the call. No, she's still on. She's still okay. on. She says that her audio is not working. Oh, okay. I I just don't have a picture of her, so I guess I can't. Oh, I don't have. Right. If you if you stop doing the screen sharing and then go back into um, participants. Oh yes, yes. You. Hi, Louisa. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Louisa, you can always select the right. Are you using headphones? Just write it up here. Okay, we'll consider that she yeah. <laughs> she she heard you and she's going to work on that. Um, okay, guys, so thank you very much. Should we schedule our next meeting? Yep. Yep. Okay. Wonderful. Um, let's see what Oh, I something from Louisa. Okay, let's see. What are we looking at? Okay, so um, I guess we can look at later in May since we met twice in April. Thank you for your patience on that. Um, getting that grant will be, that proposal out will be helpful for us. So do you guys want to look at maybe the third full week in May, like the week of the 18th? Perfect. Yeah, that should work. Uh, yep. I will still be here. Okay, so um, I guess let's, since we don't know what Zoom uh, meeting rooms are available right now, should we um, just pick a couple dates that work for the group and I'll get back to you after I connect with Tom to see what's open? Yeah. Okay. The same night with, with Thursday night? Well, Where are we at Thursday? Um, we could do, yeah, we could do Thursday or, or let's, let's do Thursday and one other night. Is that possible? Call you right back. Sorry about that. 
Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm free any fine. night. So. Yeah, Thursday's fine. So Thursday the 21st, does that work for you, um, Isabel, as oh. one of uh, are we doing 6.30 again? We could, yeah, we were, do you want a different time or? No, so no, no, no. If, if the 21st doesn't work, is anyone available on Wednesday the 20th? Yes, both. Okay. Both, yeah. Great, and Luis, if that doesn't work for you, you shoot me an email or text. So we'll, we'll touch base with Tom on um, whether the 20th or the 21st will work for the meeting and uh, we'll send out invites again. So I, I will plan to send you the proposal for the grant. Let and feel free to give me as much candid feedback um, and edit as you as you can can muster. I appreciate your your input. She's saying twenty is perfect. What was that, Sati? She's saying twentieth is perfect, Luisa. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, twentieth is perfect. Okay, great. Um, thank yeah. you. Okay, great. That might be record for the shortest meeting we've had. <laughs> well done again, Kat. Well, no, you guys helped that along. So thank you very much. Um, and everyone be well and um, stay safe and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye all. Thank you, Tom LaFlame.